Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator, co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have a special guest, Dale Pauls, with us, who's Director of the Healthcare Centers. Dale has been on this program before, provided some valuable information before, but as we'll conclude in the program today, this will be his final TV8 program with Sheboygan County. Dale, it's good to have you with us. Thank you, Adam. Earlier this summer, the health care centers uh, made a rather significant decision, and that was that Sheboygan County should look at the possibility of privatizing our Sunny Ridge Health Care Center, either leasing it or selling the facility. Uh, there's been some work done to uh, you know, get some providers to, to uh, possibly explore that option with us. And the first question I have is, Please begin by providing a little background as to what's led up to this decision of possibly leasing or selling Sunny Ridge, especially if you look back at the last four or five years. Be glad to. Um, actually, if we go back five years, we go back to when the county had decided to close Comprehensive and consolidate uh, with Rocky Knoll. Um, they invested approximately six million dollars in a new, a new building on that campus for the uh, developmentally disabled and we did some remodeling. Um, so that was accomplished in July of 2002. By 2003, um, with, with the county taking a look at what the, the future might be for the health care centers, doing some you know 10 year projections, we were seeing right away there that uh, tax levy was going to be increasing due to a number of things, but one primarily with the, uh, the additional money that we had been receiving through a, a federal program was, was diminishing significantly. We had $8 million in 2002, it was gonna to drop to five. And, and so um, in November 2003, Chairman Gehring uh, appointed a, a citizen's task force and, and their task was to explore and evaluate options for the healthcare centers. Um, and it was due to, as I said, funding changing, but also what was going on as far as long-term care, um, escalating dollars that were needed from, from the um, subsidization by taxpayers, and our increasing uh, wages and benefits that were coming along. So that committee was established, as I said, in November. Kind of Simultaneously, the or not kind of, we were uh, engaging uh, Gunnarsson and Graham healthcare uh, consultants to look at an operational study of uh, the two healthcare centers. By June, then of 2005, the the task force had brought forth recommendations to the to the healthcare centers committee, including the recommendations from Gunnarsson and Graham. And basically, we were looking at uh, what were some of the alternatives that. Could, could be uh, provided as far as services at Sunny Ridge, wage and benefits, whether there was ways to make concessions in those areas, and then um, uh, downsizing um, the facilities. From there, the, the healthcare committee's virtually been working on that uh, up, up until this point. Um, some headway was made in the area of wage and benefits, we approximately saved $1.6 million, or 1.4, I should say. Um, however, um, trying to nego negotiate with the unions to maybe outsource laundry and housekeeping, um, have them contribute, to all the county employees uh, contribute more toward uh, the uh, retirement plan. Some of those things, uh, there was efforts made, but just not headway made. So the the challenge that the task force had laid out was that we should try to reduce that tax levy by approximately 75% at the time, and that was $3.2 million. Um, we know to date we certainly have not been able to reach that. During the time, the five-year period, tax levy has continued to increase. In 2003, it was like at $2 million, then it jumped to $3 million. Uh, in 2004 and five, it was at $5 million, and we know today is it. It's at, at six million. So um, in the Gunnarsson Graham report, they had recommended we go through the downsizing, we do um, look at alternate uh, possibilities of the use of the, of the North Building, which we went out with a request for information on, didn't find anybody that was really interested in it. Um, 
But in addition to that, they said if you go through all of these processes, the other things that we should look at is potentially selling or leasing Sunny Ridge to see if there, there is interest in that. That request has been made. Which brings us up to 2006, and obviously Dale just covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time, and, and uh, summarize your summary. I mean, we went from a tax levy in 01 of 1 million to a tax levy of 6 million as it stands today. Mm -hmm. We went from every department having no more than 2.83% increases countywide, 23 departments, to one department having over a 483% increase over that period of time. So it's just been a tremendous challenge that Dale and his team have had to contend with. And to the credit of the county board, there has been a lot of activity and a lot of alternatives explored. And I think the Healthcare Center Citizens Task Force, the advisory committee that Chairman Gehring recommended to the county board and the full county board ultimately uh, reviewed and appointed, uh, that really, I think, started raising awareness in this community that some, some things have got to change. We have to look at some different options. And obviously, there's been a great deal of work that's ensued. But as you said, in 06, we're looking at a situation now because of these escalating costs and the continuing decrease in revenue from the state and federal government and, and other factors, we're looking at the possibility of privatizing leasing or selling Sunny Ridge. What's the status of the request for proposal at this time, Dale? Well, interested parties were to, are to submit their uh, proposals by tomorrow, September 22nd. Um, to my knowledge, we have one definitely interested um, provider. Um, there, you know, there was a due diligence committee that was appointed, uh, made up of uh, Bernie Romer, who's the purchasing agent, he pretty much is the leader of that committee, along with Carl Biesing, the Corporation Council, um, Tim Finch, the Finance Director, uh, um, Mike Collard, H the Human Resources Committee, or uh, um, Director, um, Ken Conger, who is a member of the Healthcare Centers Committee, um, Mike Vandersteen. Mike chair. Vandersteen is the, as, as chair of our committee is on that. Yes. I don't know if I'm... Yourself? Yes. All three administrators are, are part of that committee. And what's the purpose? I mean, our viewers might be wondering, well, what is a due diligence committee? What is the objective of this committee that you just described in reviewing the RFPs? What, what are they supposed to do? Well, um, first of all, those that were interested, and there were several that were interested initially, we conducted tours of, of, of Sunny Ridge and, and interviewed um, the representatives from the, from the interested parties. Of, once they submitted um, their interest, we were taking a look at, many of them have operations in the, in the state. Or, um, we were looking at how, how um, they staff those facilities, how they were, um, going financially, um, it, it basically to, to take a look at um, what their operations were like and, and how solvent um, those organizations Cause we, were. Because we certainly aren't going to bring anyone in here that isn't going to continue to provide excellent quality care. And I know you've mentioned and the Health Care Centers Committee have mentioned that first and foremost, our residents and their care and the quality mm -hmm. of that care and what happens of them is, is number one. And in fact, along those lines, and certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Healthcare Centers Committee stated that you know no residents are going to have to be relocated or or moved out of Sunny Ridge if in fa fact we lease or sell Sunny Ridge. Is that correct? Yes, that's that's correct. That's always been the, the position. So the due diligence committee reviews the different providers, as you stated. It's down to one now, and and they're reviewing and getting more information about this provider and the potential for leasing or selling. Who ultimately will make the final decision on whether or not Sunny Ridge is privatized? Well, the county board will make that final decision. The due diligence committee will bring forth information to the health care centers committee with, with uh, you know, advice to them. They then would take their recommendation to the county board. So Bill's not going to do this on his own. Chair, Chairman <laughs> Gehring isn't just going to say this is what we're going to do or you're not going to do that or I'm not going to do that. Ultimately, the full county board, 34 county board supervisors will make that decision. Yeah, that's, that's been the, 
this decision that they would reach. When do you anticipate um, some type of decision being made one way or the other? If you follow the earliest scenario, it could, the decision could be reached as early as December of this year. Um, the, the committee would um, bring forth, the, or the due diligence committee would go to the health care centers committee. They would bring it to the, to the board by November. Um, that would be referred to committee and then back to the board to make a decision in December. Probably an aggressive um, bit of optimism that it's going to happen that fast because there's, there's still a lot of due diligence if, in fact, uh, both parties are, are very interested in, in, in you know, um, uh, a sale. So my guess would be more like the first quarter of 2007. And I know that at least the three providers that we heard from, they had uh, an open presentation at uh, Sunny Ridge a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and I know all three providers said that if in fact they lease or purchase Sunny Ridge, they certainly wanted to maintain the majority of our staffing, Absolutely. staff that are there and, and would need to work with them with a new bargaining contract, what have you, and mm -hmm. all that takes time to work through as well. It does. Very good, thank you, Dale. Okay, Dale, we've been talking about either selling or leasing Sunny Ridge, but things also are happening at Rocky Knoll. And in fact, our viewers probably know that the ICFMR, known as Woodland Village, is closing. Could you explain what the ICFMR really is and why we're closing it? The, the acronym stands for Intermediate Care Facility for the Mentally Retarded. Um, it's, it's, as I said earlier, the building that we built um, in, in uh, 2002, thinking that that was going to be their home uh, for the, you know, the developmentally disabled. And um, so that's where they, they have been living. However, um, in 2004, there was some statutory language that really changed what um, we're now looking to do in regards to where they will be living in the future. Um, I, if I may, Chairman Gary, I just wanted sure. to make a comment there because this is a great example of how quickly the dynamics of this area can change and perhaps that's where you were headed, Dale, but for the county board to make the decision to consolidate from three facilities to two, ultimately it was about an eight million dollar investment. Mm -hmm. I think it was eight point nine million dollars mm -hmm. at Rocky Knoll, six million of which were probably just for that wing and some yes. of those amenities alone, yes. as you mentioned earlier. And then two years later, for statutory changes to occur that now are requiring a different approach and, and working with the community to to relocate these re residents to the community, which ultimately may be a wonderful thing to do for the quality of their lives. But if you're a county board supervisor, you know, you've just made a decision to spend six, eight, ten million dollars on infrastructure improvements, and two years later you're completely shifting gears. And sometimes I think uh, people in the community may wonder, well, what is going on here? And that's an example of some of the dynamics that we're dealing with. Maybe I can add a little bit more to, to the, the closure piece. Statutorily, uh, first of all, in the beginning in January of 05, they, pe people could not be admitted to the, to the ICFMR unless it was determined by the court that they were in their most integrated setting. And the most integrated setting definition is, is that these people will be able to live with people other than the, the majority of the time other than with their peers. So it basically led to people being able to be placed in group homes in the community. Um, we knew that with admissions basically being frozen, it was going to be a, a gradual decline. As you gradually decline, it's not a, a very efficient type of, uh, you know, uh, being able to operate. And so in December of, of um, 2005, the, the recommendation was to the healthcare centers that, that we close it and um, work with Health and Human Services on uh, community placement. So how has this plan really been implemented? Moving 37 individuals is a major undertaking. What departments work together on that and how has it been coming along? Well, it's a combination of departments for sure. Um, obviously staff from uh, at uh, Rocky Knoll, but uh, Health and Human Services has probably the biggest uh, 
responsibility because they first of all had to find providers in the community that would that we would be able to to transfer so that process has been going on they engaged four or three different providers to to open up new homes and and renovate along with our two departments the state of wisconsin has a several individuals that are basically overseeing this along with the ombudsman and uh, Disability Rights Wisconsin, which represents people under 65, are in these meetings. We've been meeting, uh, we began the, seriously the process in February um, with 31 residents. Today we have eight in the facility. So it has been really progressing well. And um, those residents that have, have uh, relocated, uh, positive um, responses back on, on how they're uh, uh, liking living in their new arrangements. Is there a specific date when it will be, when Woodland Village will be officially closed? It is now going to be October 31st of this year, and I say now because it, we were hoping by September 30, 30th, but due to some unforeseen problems, <clears throat> excuse me, in regards to the uh, one of the projects, we've had to extend it 30 days, but, but it will be um, closed as of October 31st. The physical plant where Woodland Village uh, was is a very nice place. What are our plans for use of that facility? The plan would be to transfer 37 skilled beds from Sunny Ridge to, to Rocky Knoll, replacing the ICFMR beds so that uh, then we would have a to complete total of 195 skilled beds there. Our um, goal is to operate those mainly as rehabilitation beds. Um, some emphasis on short term, but certainly not that, that if someone comes into Medicare and maybe they're um, longer, uh, would be able to be there, as well as those are all private rooms. So if other parties within the, or residents within the facility are interested, they, they could uh, uh, move to, to a private room uh, in Woodland Village. Mm -hmm. Is there a greater benefit to the community for having more rehab beds in the area? Yes, um, I think this is where we see the demand growing more and more as we look at what the role will be for a long-term care facility. It's kind of a, it's a little bit of a misnomer. There always will be some residents that you know, aren't going to be discharged back home, but more and more are being discharged to alternate placements Dollars are being provided in the community to maintain them. So rehabilitation is a strong emphasis. The other part of it is that we want to start doing a little outpatient rehabilitation where people can just come to the facility, get the therapy, and go back home. So I, I see it twofold, um, filling a niche uh, for short-term rehab as well as uh, community involvement from an outpatient basis. How do we plan to market this shift in who we hope to have uh, enter our facility? Several ways. Um, we're just about to complete a, a brochure for, for all of Rock and Knoll, but we will have a specific insert in that brochure that um, concentrates directly on, the, on Woodland Village and, and what we have, the services we have to offer there. Um, probably we're looking at opening that by mid-November Within a month, we would have an open house that we want to invite the public and, and other um, key players to. We talked this morning in a meeting that we're going to develop a PowerPoint presentation that we'll be taking to the community, to different groups, seniors, uh, you know, um, uh, some of the uh, other groups in the community. So kind of a combination of, and the key also will be to talk to discharge planners and and physicians that, and they'll be brought into the um, this uh, marketing plan. Okay, and Dale, I would just like to thank you on your final show of your 12 years of service to Sheboygan County. Well, thank you very Appreciate much, uh, Chairman. Drop the balloons, <laughs> <laughs> Dale. You, you've covered a fair amount of ground and obviously gotten into some detail about Sunny Sunny Ridge and the RFP and, and Rocky Knoll, and and I think most people in this community after the five years of discussion really about our health care centers 
I think most people now are recognizing, you know, change is going to happen, needs to happen. And as you well know, as, you know, as well as anyone, there have been changes at the federal and state level with policy changes. There is more emphasis on providing alternatives to traditional nursing home care. We've seen a significant decrease in the funding that's been provided to own and operate two nursing homes. As you touched on earlier, IGT funds or intergovernmental transfer funds have gone from a high of $8 million to now about $2.5 million. We've seen skyrocketing costs associated with health insurance. It's gone up over 120% in five years. Yet at the same time, Medicaid to support our operations has gone up just a couple of percentages. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've really been dealt a difficult hand to play here, and, and I think to the credit of you and your staff, all the residents or, or staff at Sunny Ridge and Rocky Knoll, but certainly the county board, we've been making some changes. And one question our viewers may have is, well, what does this all mean? You know, Sheboygan County is one of 72 counties. We currently have two facilities. If we sell or lease Sunny Ridge, we're gonna to continue to own and operate Rocky Knoll. How many beds will we actually own and operate in comparison to other counties in the state? What's the state average? Could you shed some light on that, please? The capacity at Rocky Knoll will be 195. And the most recent statistics show that the average number of beds in county operated facilities will be, it is at 128. So we're considerably still above the, the average and um, probably will be ranked anywhere from second or third in the state with, with the number of licensed beds, even operating one, one facility. So despite some of the letters to the editor people may read uh, criticizing the county board or the health care centers or management about the changes that are occurring, bottom line is as it stands today, we own and operate more beds than any county in the state of Wisconsin. Yes. And even if the county board chooses to lease or sell Sunny Ridge, we're still gonna own and operate more beds than the vast majority, in fact, be either in the top two or three in the state. Correct. I mean, rather yes. remarkable, frankly, yes. from a standpoint of all the challenges that are going on from a fiscal standpoint. You've been with us, as, as Bill said, about 12 years now, and, and earlier this year, this, in fact, I think it was the spring or early summer, uh, you said that you're going to start another chapter in your life and, and retire. And as yeah. you know, Dale, I'm certainly going to miss you, and, and the county as a whole is going to miss you. But based on that experience you've had, not only in Sheboygan County, but your previous experience working with nursing homes, in your opinion, what do you think the mission of our health care center should be in the future? Where are we headed? Where should we be headed? Well, I think we need to head toward what was originally the mission of county facilities, how they started out caring for the most needy, the most difficult. Um, you know, over time, we got into caring for residents that, that today can be cared by, for by the, the profits and the uh, for-profit and non-profit sector. I think there always will be a need for us because of either they're not able to provide those services in those facilities or um, they choose not to. And I'm talking about you know, behavioral people that may have a, an Alzheimer's diagnosis, the mentally ill, um, those, those kinds of residents. I think, as you said, I, talking about size, I, by doing that and knowing what the trend is, is that it's gonna continue, the need is gonna to continue to drop, but for more specific needs, um, that's where our niche is, is, is a, a county facility. Now, having said that, um, the challenge still lies there as far as being able to maintain a, a tax levy that's, that's reasonable. Uh, I see that ongoing a challenge. We're, the things that are affecting it right now are gonna affect it in the future. We need to be very you know, cognizant of getting the best uh, contracts uh, with, our, with our labor unions. Um, we need at Rocky Knoll hopefully to make it very successful on the revenue side with um, the Medicare population. So it won't be easy to you know, fulfill that mission, but I, I think you know, with 
I'm hopeful that it can be because I, I do feel county homes um, serving that purpose um, are, are needed. As I think about your tenure as our health care centers director, as I've shared with you before, uh, if you look at previous directors, they haven't lasted as long. <laughs> You've hung in there uh, during some very trying, challenging times. And as you look at your career at the health care centers, what do you look back on as being, you know, what you, what you deem to be one of your uh, more impressive accomplishments or, you know, uh, an area where you, you felt uh, you made a difference and you, and you think fondly of? Well, you know, a knee-jerk reaction would be being able to survive for 33 years in the long-term <laughs> industry. <laughs> no, but as I look back, I, I think, you know, particularly I, I look at Sheboygan County and, and um, being a part of a team that was able to make the consolidation of, of two healthcare centers. That, you know, that was a major undertaking and, and it took a team to do that. And so I, you know, I feel um, pleased to have been a, a part of that. But overall for my, you know, the whole history is just feeling that we've, I've, wherever I've been, I've had a team that uh, provided the best care that, that, that we could provide. And, and that's what we're in the business for is to, to make those uh, individuals' lives that are living with you the, the best. And I, I, I think that's probably my most memorable moment or, uh, of thinking about accomplishments. Well, Dale, we only have a few more minutes left and again, uh, shared some important information. If folks do have additional questions or concerns, certainly I know they can contact you directly or a member of your team. Um, Gene Stark at Sunny Ridge, the administrator there, Kayla Renz, your assistant at Rocky Knoll, or any member of our, of our staff mm -hmm. at the healthcare centers. But certainly on a personal note, as I look back at your track record, uh, I can recall when I started here you know, eight years ago, there was a tremendous amount of concern about comprehensive and, and going, as you said, from three facilities to two, consolidating that. A lot of concern in regards to the welfare of the residents and do we really need a new building? And after it was all said and done, we provided residents with a state-of-the-art facility that meet today's codes and standards. Mm -hmm. And you know, it just turned out to be a tremendous success story, but uh, it wasn't easy. And you obviously provided a very important leadership role during that, as you have with the Healthcare Center's Advisory Committee and everything we've done along the way. And I can tell you on a personal note that I'm gonna miss working with you. And I think you've been a tremendous asset to Sheboygan County, so I thank you. Well, I, th I thank you very much for the, those words. Um, I have enjoyed the 12 years. It's, as you said, it's been challenging, but I think that always makes work more uh, worthwhile too. So I, in many respects, will miss it. In other respects, it's, it's time to devote you know, some of my life to a grandchild and, and, and some of the other interests that, that and, and, and family in general that may have taken a, you know, a back seat in, in my work life, so. Um, well, good to have Mr. Pauls with us today. If you wanted to touch base with Dale, just to wish him well, he's certainly not leaving tomorrow. I know his last day is gonna be in early January, so he's gonna be with us for a while. And as he said, he's got a good team in place and we'll continue to take on the challenges that present themselves and try to do the best we can for the benefit of this community. But until next week, or next month rather, on behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring and the County Board, and again my Adam Payne, County Administrator, thank you for joining us. Next month, Mary Beth Emmerichs, the Interim Dean of UW Sheboygan, Sheboygan filling the very large shoes of Dean Ray Hernandez, who departed uh, that position a little while ago, is going to be with us to talk about her vision and some of the uh, real nice activities that are happening here at UW Sheboygan. So again, until next month, Thank you for joining us.